First, I want to, uh, just talking about the title, Virtual Sanity, Reducing Construction Risks in the Metaverse. If you go back to Nick's slide of one of his original waterfall slides, he talked about the planning phase, the design phase, the construction phase, commissioning phase, and operation. We're gonna be just focusing on just that construction phase. And inside of that construction phase, we're looking at digital twin. Now, when uh, Nick was talking about digital twin, it was the larger digital twin concept where you're dealing with BIM modelings, you're building information modelings, which is the geometry, all that CAD stuff that you see, the 3D stuff, plus also the data. Well, I'm not gonna be talking about the data side of it, it's really just that geometry. So before I come, jump into this, I do have just a couple quick interactive questions, so please tolerate me on this. Number one, everyone out there, if you've ever walked a job site, just raise your hand. Okay, next, if you've ever walked a job site digitally, raise your hand. Okay, here's the last one. If I asked you when you're back in your office to walk through a job site on your own, digitally, who could do it? Okay, so those hands are starting to go down. That's really the focus of what we're looking at. Next thing. This is the last part of the interactive part. Raise your hand if you remember a flip phone and texting on a flip phone. Okay. Difficult. Last question. If you have a cell phone, lift it up. Because I'm going to be referencing to just the use of a cell phone throughout this process. Okay. You can put your cell phones down. Think about virtual reality, which is what we're going to be talking about. Virtual reality, there's old virtual reality, there's new virtual reality. Old virtual reality is like your flip phone, going through and texting. Very difficult, limited. If you wanted to uh, do something more with taking pictures, you know, the cameras got added, you could do it, but it was difficult. New technology, very accessible. We live in a digital age. We can text, we can take video, we can take photos, we can watch movies, we can uh, check the stock report. All these different things, we do that now because the technology is easy. In the exact same way, virtual reality, tethered, walk-up workstation, very difficult. During the last couple years, uh, we've, uh, we had the opportunity because of the millions of square feet that we're doing on data center construction, to be able to transform that whole technology area for virtual reality, working with some software developers, so that now use of, 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 of virtual models, being able to walk through them is as easy as using this phone. So that's what I wanna talk about. We do know that right now, technology is there where you're seeing contractors walking through sites and they're flipping through uh, iPads um, uh, that they're carrying around and they're flipping through drawings. My phone right now using plan grid, I have tens of thousands of drawings that are on my phone. Same thing with my, uh, with my iPad. It then goes past that with that technology. If you look up here, what this uh, contractor is doing is he's holding up his iPad and he's not only seeing the physical environment, but he has a BIM model superimposed on top of it. That's augmented reality. You're taking your reality and you're augmenting the BIM side onto it. This technology then expands even further. And with that technology up in the right uh, corner is HoloLens, uh, Microsoft HoloLens, where you're putting on a lens and as you're turning around, everything is all superimposed onto your headset when you're looking. So you see what's been built, but you also can see virtually what is going to be built. When, we, when we're doing this, this technology now becomes more accessible. It reduces risks you know, from miscoordination and we really start incorporating a lot of AEC software uh, into this overall process. Architects and engineers are, are starting at the very beginning during that planning and design phase. They're already including, or uh, all their modeling is being done through BIM. It's all 3D modeling that they then generate all the 2D drawings that we historically take a look at and review. And then the contractors are really excited about go doing all this modeling and getting their models and, and being able to create these very tight BIM models that they can then go in and do fabrication off of so they truly do represent what is gonna be, uh, what is gonna be built. We skipped a step though. 
with this, these models, we're not able to engage with them. The VDC experts, the virtual design and construction uh, experts engage with them. We don't. Our facilities operators don't. The contractors uh, out in the field don't. The owners don't engage. The architects and engineers, unless they're that BIM person, do not engage in it. So really that first point where you truly engage in a, uh, in a 3D environment is when you truly walk the site, which we all say that we do. But what if you could bring that forward in time? That's what we're gonna be talking about. Going from a physical job walk over to a virtual job walk. So what I want you to do is just think about what that benefit is that you've had for virtual job walks. Individually, collectively, by trades, by occupation, by focus, there's always these benefits that are out there whenever you're walking that job site. But could you get those same benefits if you brought it earlier? We have the engineers, architects are doing their design, their modeling. Contractors take it, bring it to a higher level, again, that goes into prefabrication. And, and, and from that prefabrication, they then start the construction. We then see it at that point. But when we see stuff and we have these walks, we get comments back, but it, it misses, or when we get these comments during a physical job walk, it adds risk. It could be corrective actions, it could be things that we missed, it could be uh, optimization, adds risk to construction schedule, quality, cost. So what we wanna do is just bring this real, or a lot forward into a more, uh, more of an immersive environment. This is the environment that we're talking about, non-tethered. It's, the, the goal is to have it simple, engage you, metaverse is a big uh, you know, buzzword now, but bring you into that metaverse, but really that digital environment. What we're trying to do is democratize the experience of VR for everyone. And it needs to be as easy as pulling your phone out of your pocket. This is an example, uh, you know, just simple BIM rendering on the left, built environment on the right. We know what it's like to walk on the left. What would, be, what would it uh, like uh, to walk on the right? Now I'm gonna show you just a short 30 second video which shows how we can easily take those BIM models that the contractors already have, contractors are willing to use at no additional cost with software to engage other people. Actually, I'm gonna show that to you in one minute. Um, so the, the, the one thing that I do wanna say is that interactive nature should be as easy as using a video game. Uh, you know, we, we all have, or a lot of us have kids using video games and we see people sitting there using video games. And I should clarify, a simple video game that I'm just kind of walking around. I'm not trying to use a whole bunch of uh, uh, complicated controls. But if you can interact with it in that simple of a nature, that's what we're focusing on. So this video right here no, is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know, so, I know that. So it looks like it just goes, so if that, if, if, am I seeing a seam in that uh, yes. rack and is that the 12 inch point? Right yes, there? that's your, oh, okay. that, yeah, sure, that comes nice. with the end feed and then everything else is just straight. Yeah, it seems to be working out fine. So Morris, the guy who was asking a lot of those questions, 40 years in the design and construction industry, is not a techie person, loves walking out on the site. We got a headset on him. He was like fully engaged in this. And, and it was interactive. We did not have to train anyone. You just put people in the room. The tech was not there two years ago. It's just been recently that we've had this type of easy use. I wanted to share a story with you. Last year when we were first beta testing this, we got some of our architects, engineers, a software developer into a virtual model. You have all these avatars in there. And we said, hey, let's get a mechanical, uh, mechanical facilities operator in here. We want him just to engage in this environment and tell us you know, what we are looking for is what's missing inside of this space because we're trying to create this virtual environment. Did, did the contractors not model something? It was just simple feedback that we'd be looking for. Uh, the guy that came in, his name was Mark, um, uh, was totally willing to get, uh, engage in this. And we thought, okay, this is just gonna be a very interactive experience, nothing could go wrong, right? Well, we got Mark into the mechanical room. 
showed him how to navigate, you know, it took like maybe two or three minutes. And then we asked Mark just to walk around and tell us what's, you know, like graphically, what would he change? Brighter colors, dimmer colors, black or grayscale. Mark started walking around. All these little avatars started following Mark. And then all of a sudden Mark stopped and he just said, where do I put my pallets of salt? I have to maintain this water equipment or water treatment in here. I need a six by six space to put my pallet of salts. And then I looked over virtually over at the architect and engineer. And it was so funny because I saw them, they were looking at Mark, then they just turned to each other and there was just absolute silence. And at that point, you know, the architect said, Mark, we'll get back to you. They missed it. Now, something like that, if it was missed, would have uh, been a change order that would have come in the middle of the field if we could have even accomplished that. But by bringing it into the digital environment, we were actually able to catch that where moving things around is just moving electrons. So with this, the, other, uh, the last two things I just want to leave with you is what we found in this process is that by having this virtual environment where people could meet, we were able to drive an organic one-team collaboration. That was something that I really did not anticipate. We get it in the field, that's why we meet on projects. We like to walk through sites, we like to have uh, dinners together. But that collaboration actually started happening within that virtual, uh, in that virtual area. So the challenge I wanna leave you is as leaders in the industry, owners, consultants, contractors, you have your technical teams that are doing all of this modeling. How can you help bring the technology that is now starting to become available onto your projects to help facilitate and move problems, risks that happen downstream into, uh, into a more front uh, timeframe? Thank you.